People have mentioned that my cyclone is not big enough for the hose that's on their shop vac. This shop vac came with this hose and the smallest part on that is about an inch and an eighth inside diameter. And that's all I need in my shop. I have a full size dust collection system in my shop. So this is very adequate for cleaning up around the shop and connecting to my sanders. This is an inch and a half inside diameter piece of pipe. You can use a larger hose down to the shop vac. You can adapt this all the way up to a two inch hose. Twice the diameter is four times the cross sectional area. So you can get a, a lot more flow through a bigger hose if you need it. Or you can make this whole thing out of a slightly larger piece of pipe. Just proportion the whole thing and it'll work just fine. If you don't want to do that, then let's look at how we can make a slightly larger unit that'll work for most anybody. This is a piece of 1 8 inch thick 3 ply plywood. It's very flexible stuff, thin. This is like what you would find on the back of a bookcase, piece of furniture, dust cover. We're going to put a 4 and a half inch diameter hole in the center. And this will be cut to 12 and a quarter inch outside diameter. Now we need to pay attention to where we make this cut. We want this to be able to bend and flex in this direction. So I kind of cut that a little bit skew to this grain direction. We're making this for a 3 inch inside diameter, 3 and a half inch outside diameter piece of foam core pipe. Any piece of 3 inch pipe. Take a piece of plywood, 4 inches square. I'm using quarter inch here, it's a little over quarter, you can use half inch. And we want to put a hole in the center of it so that piece of pipe will mount in there. I'm going to glue this piece of plywood on here like this. When that joint is good and dry, I'm going to bring this piece up and I'm going to glue it on top of here and clamp it until it's dry. I'm going to have to sand a little bit of an angle one or two degrees on here just to go along with the angle that this ramp is going to create. I'm just gluing that with the original tight bond glue. Need to wait and make sure that's absolutely dry before we go trying to bend this other piece up there because that's going to put that joint in quite a bit of a strain. I made a bunch of half inch square sticks and I messed up a piece of wood so I came up short. I used some other scrap in here It'll be close enough. I put painter's tape, two strings of it, and I've checked this with a square to make sure that they're running pretty straight. I'm going to pick this up and wrap it around this piece of pipe. I want it to be as tight as possible. Put a rubber band around that. Do the other side. Another rubber band around here. For the time being, I'm going to wrap a piece of tape around here just to hold that together. Do the same thing on this end. rubber bands off. And I have created a wood pipe. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to put wood glue in here. Just enough to fill these cracks. I'm going to do one section, let it dry, turn it, do another section, let it dry until I get all the way around there. Then I'll take the tape off of there. I'll fill this with sawdust and wood glue and sand it. This will be my center pipe for the cyclone. So I put little dabs of glue in there and I'm going to let that dry. I do not want to get so aggressive with the glue that it soaks in and gets up against this pipe. I don't want the glue to stick to the pipe. The glue is thick enough that the surface tension will generally keep it from going down in there too far. That glue has dried pretty well. I took the tape off of there. 
and I took the tape off the inside. I'm going to leave the plastic pipe in there, but the tape on the inside can start to roll up and actually make it difficult to get that pipe out, so take that out as soon as I can. This has been glued together. I put a little extra fill of the glue on both sides of the bulkhead just to give a little extra support to this plywood. This plywood is under quite a bit of stress right now, so we want to be careful with it and not do anything to cause it to crack until we get through with the assembly. When I picked this up and glued it on top of the bulkhead, I distorted this inside circle. It is no longer a true four and a half inch diameter circle. I cut out a cardboard template and by visually sighting down the edge of this, made a mark along here approximating the material I'm going to need to remove to make that a true circle. And so my four and a half inch diameter pipe will fit up inside there. And I don't want to start sanding on that until this has been filled and sanded. That's been filled with a mixture of tight bond glue and oak sawdust. This has turned black. That's the reaction of that oak and that tight bond glue. I didn't want to wait all day for this to dry, so I put it in the oven. I got a little short piece of pipe in each end. I put that in the oven at 170 degrees or warm for about an hour and a half, and that dried that right out, and now I can keep working on it. pretty close with my estimate about where that had to be sanded for this piece of pipe to fit down in there. When this ramp is glued to this piece of pipe, I want this bulkhead to be fairly vertical. It doesn't have to be exact, but pretty close. I'm going to cut this off square on the compound miter saw. I only want that to stick down an inch or so below the ramp. And we'll cut it off about here. This piece of pipe will stay in there all the time I'm gluing this ramp to this wood to make sure that that pipe stays round. And this is intended to be able to go up and down so I can play that like a trombone and find the sweet spot for the air return when this assembly is completed. This has been glued together and I put a fillet of glue between the wood pipe and the plywood ramp on both sides. And I think you can see that would make a pretty good auger. The top of the collector is 12 and a quarter inches in diameter. I'm going to make this 5 inches. I have a center support rod. I made this a little bit big in diameter. I already had this disc and I'm using it just for stability because this will be a little top heavy while we're putting it together. I have a piece of pipe placed inside this wood pipe. And I have a piece of pipe with a wooden disc glued to it. And then I tack glued that to this rod. I've made a bunch of 24 inch and 20 inch sticks. I'm going to visually align this so it is centered on the support rod. I'll put a little tack glue on this to hold the four of these into position. I won't glue any of the others. All of these will be glued to this piece here. And then there'll be a shorter 20 inch one over here that will come around to here. And this one will go around to there. I have seven slats glued into four quadrants and some rubber bands holding that together until the glue sets. At the bottom you need to remember to put some rubber bands down here before you put the top on. I've glued this up to this stage. I've spent about two hours on this. This one's a little more complicated with this changing length of slats. I'm going to leave this open so I can reach inside here and fill in some of these joints in there a little bit. I need to taper this piece in so it matches the curvature. And just putting these rubber bands around here You'd be surprised how much that helps to hold everything together. And occasionally you need a clamp because these, these slats, they, after you cut them, they bend and twist and bow. And you just pull them into shape with a little glue. When the glue dries, it'll stay there. 
I have this completed and varnished. When I installed this piece, it's only about that long. And right about here, I cut a groove all the way around the pipe. And I took a Dremel tool and cut a groove in the edge of the plywood. And I put construction adhesive on the pipe and on that and turned that back and forth. And those grooves get a little tooth to that pipe help hold that in place. This piece of pipe is 16 inches long. I have it inserted 13 inches deep. Puts the end of that pipe right about here. This piece around here is just an external support ring just to support that pipe. That pipe by nature is not a real strong construction but with that ring on there and there's another one on the inside that'll last forever. Now this pipe will slide up and down. We can play with that adjustment to try and find the best place for the air return on the inside of the cone. This is made to sit on a five gallon bucket. This is just a piece of hardboard. Got a ring around here to keep it centered on the bucket. And this is a five inch opening. This is about as tall as I can make this and still be able to reach inside it and do what work I have to do. The reason for the five inch opening is so I can reach inside here and do the caulking and varnishing that, that I need to do and to be able to get my shoulder up inside here. The length of your reach is really the limiting factor on how tall this cyclone can be. In operation, this is sitting on top of a five gallon bucket. A cyclone creates a little mini tornado on the inside and it can keep the contents of the five gallon bucket stirred up. This is a five inch opening. My previous collectors have been three inch and four inch openings. On the last collector, I've noticed the four inch opening does stir up the contents of the bucket quite a bit. I'm not sure if this is going to work on top of a five gallon bucket. It may very well be that bucket is too shallow and if this stirs it up too much it may carry material back out through the exhaust. Now a possible solution for this would be to make a spool piece that would have a flange on each end that would connect to here, be made of the same taper and it would convert this from 5 inch to 4 inch or 3 inch. This is already a fairly tall unit and is probably going to be best suited for collecting the larger shavings that come off of a joiner or a planer. You may be better off to just mount this on top of a small drum. But we'll test it and we'll see how it does. This cyclone was built for 3 inch hoses. I do not have a 3 inch hose in my shop which will easily connect to the cyclone and I have no intention of tearing something apart just to demonstrate it. Actually, I have no use for the cyclone at all other than building it just to see how it would work. I bought these couplings that go from 3 inch to 2 inch. I didn't have enough clearance on the suction side. I put this on the lathe. I sharpened it about that much. Reduced the thickness of the wall and got rid of this angular section right in here. That gives me enough clearance to get in here that fits on and I still have some space under here. That's one thing to note that if you're building this yourself you could make this just a little bit taller to give you a little more clearance so that this would fit on there without having to do that modification. One thing I have noticed just playing with this on the shop vac, uh, if I put this on a full close and load this to full vacuum off the shop vac, there is some deflection in this eighth inch plywood. That's a pretty good load on a, on a large surface area like this. So you may want to consider laminating a second piece of eighth inch plywood around here after this is bent and glued into shape just to stiffen that assembly or possibly try making it out of quarter inch. It's going to be difficult to bend a piece of quarter inch, but it can probably be done.